Whew. Okay, so we're getting darn on personal again. Because I want to mix it up with the Friday segments. Like, the Friday segments are not just going to be Freaky Friday in the sense of me talking naughty talk. Um, you know, sets and adult stars and all that. I also want to, to also give y'all a little bit of personal insight about me as well. Uh, stuff that I don't necessarily have time to do on the live streams or whatnot. Or I might not necessarily feel comfortable you know, doing it on the live stream. Because it's like, I don't know how I... You know, I y'all know I'm still dealing with the agoraphobia. That's one thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm managing it a lot more. So I'm able to darn go and have awkward conversations. I'm able to be in certain groups to a certain extent. Um, but you know, certain stuff like this still overwhelms me. So, yeah, we're going to discuss abandonment issues, attachment disorders, and how it has affected my dating life. So, let's start off with my upbringing. I was raised by the egg donor up until I was like 10 years old. Um, my oldest brother's father left when I was 2 um, with my older brother. So, me and him have always been separated. I don't have no type of memory of my older brother at all we do not have a relationship even um into our adult years uh many years after um you know i turned 18 i managed to try to track them down and all of that and the relationship still wasn't there they managed to surprise my um egg donor for her 50th birthday which was five years ago now um they came through in 2000 and Wait a minute, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't quite 50 years ago. Because I want to say I was working at Dargon. Oh no, it was four years ago. It was back in, but why did I think it was her 50th birthday they surprised her at? Because she's born in 68, she's 55 now. Um... But I want to say they came through either 2018, 2019 and surprised her. They was here for a week, but he didn't stay here. We didn't converse or nothing. We did one hug and that was it. Um, because it was like, it was so much, you know, time that has passed or whatnot. So There's a long story behind it. Um, the reason why I darn gonna distance myself with something petty that don't even matter now I was darn on a little bit envious of my older brother that this one managed to go out her way to go all the way up to Maryland. Now, I understand that this is the child that you never darn on raised or whatnot, so you felt some resentment and all of that for not being there. So, you got on a, a, a train or whatnot for over 10 hours to Baltimore, Maryland for his graduation. Because we are year, even though we two years apart, he flunked a couple times. I was held back one time, so that made our graduations a year apart. And with that being said, she was there for a whole week leading up to his graduation and a couple of days after the graduation. Now, mind you, we in the same household. Now come time for my graduation. Y'all know the tragic story with my graduation. I had to deal with love life. I had to deal with love life drama. Um, I had to deal with Dargon Crohn's disease. I had to deal with colon cancer. I had to deal with a vindictive Dargon English teacher. I had to Dargon repeat English for all over again. That was the only class that I've ever in high school had to ever repeat. I've never felt the class before in high school. That motherfucking teacher Dargon purposely held me back because I didn't darn go get the a paper. He was refusing to darn go and accept my... It's not like I wasn't doing the work. Even though I had a legitimate medical excuse, I was knocked out half the time. I was only in school two days a week here, three days there. He wasn't giving me no sort of extensions on the um on my homework and none of that. Flat out just discriminatory or whatnot. And I think it was because he knew that I was trans before I knew I was trans. Because come to find out, darn on, he did the other girl that was in the English class the same way that was visibly trans. Uh, she she conveniently darn on fell too. That's the only darn on thing I'm I'm putting it towards. It's like, 
Cause it's like, what, why in the fuck? Why fuck with me? And it's like I'm already darn gonna deal with all this darn gonna shit, right? Here you go, darn gonna fail me. And I had to repeat English all over again. But due to the fact that the senior project is what counts for like 90% of the curriculum of that class, I passed my senior project with flying colors. That's what was even more shocking. I, I scored the highest out of everybody, even though I had the toughest career field and I was darn on still recovering or whatnot from treatments and all of that. I had only like one fourth the time to put forth my presentation compared to everybody else because of the fact that I was going to the gastroenterologist one day, the regular uh, general practitioner this day, the oncologist this day, uh, <laughs> then this doctor I can't even think of it, the name of it at the moment. But I was being juggled so many different ways. I'm on prednisone, I'm on Dargon Percocet, I'm on Oxycontin, I'm a walking Dargon zombie half the damn time. And you Dargon fail me. Thank goodness my other teacher, shout out, I think her name was Miss McCollum, if I'm not, Lord don't get me darn, I might get, I might be getting her name uh, confused, but whoever was the English 4 teacher that was on the A Hall at E.E. E. Smith, honey, shout out to her, beautiful brown skinned girl with the short hair or whatnot, so I'm sure it's no longer like that now after all these years, but... I didn't have to do no work because it was understood. I even went to Miss Chalmers, who was the principal at the time. We struck up an agreement that as long as I did the classwork, that was the only thing I had to do. Because this motherfucker didn't allow me to darn gonna put my classwork stuff in. I was still getting the homework and stuff assignments, but I wasn't able to return them in in a timely manner because I was darn gonna only be at school maybe two days a week here, three days if I was lucky. With her now, I'm, you know, I'm in remission. I'm darn going to get back better. I done blew up like a darn on warehouse. The prednisone done made me gain 90 pounds. I'm exercising five, six days a week trying to lose this weight prior to graduation, which I, I did successfully. I told y'all I managed to lose 60 pounds within um, six months. Um, I end up losing 30 pounds within two months alone. Got my body snatched for graduation. Happy ending on that front, except for I didn't get the man in the end. <laughs> but y'all already know that darn on tell. But yeah, that is one aspect of it. Um, when it came time for graduation, I say all that to say the demon was not there for my graduation. The bitch didn't even have to work. She darn gone was off that day. Still didn't darn gonna get her ass up in a timely enough manner. For my graduation. And the Crown Coliseum was down the motherfucking street. So that is one point of the Aragorn issue I had. Because I was like, this heifer, Aragorn, went all the way up north for your graduation. But didn't go to mine. So I was Aragorn so much in my feelings, I Aragorn blocked my older brother and didn't speak for him until he are gonna got down here. And even then, I just said hello, and that was it. I didn't even say goodbye when they darn gonna left back up to darn gonna Merlin. Now I don't find out he's serving five years in darn gonna uh, jail or whatnot. So you done did some fuck shit, honey. We still ain't got a relationship to this day. All stemming from that pettiness. That goes to show. <laughs> and once again, I can own my faults in on, on what I contributed to that. I'm very much a textbook Capricorn. Like, if I if I get a grudge with you, Lord knows I can hold a grudge forever. <laughs> Cause it, it, I did not have no business holding a grudge against my older brother over some shit like that. Now there's a lot of things to hold him accountable for. The baby mama drama. Yeah, for y'all that don't know, I'm actually an auntie. I have I have a nephew and I have a niece from my older um brother um that I have not had the pleasure of ever meeting. But, yeah, I've held that darn gone grudge for over 10 years. Even after I done a fully distanced myself from this demon, the love was darn gone completely lost and everything. And I still held that damn grudge. And then it took me just the last year to realize that diva, your ass is trifling for this shit. So, that was brought upon myself where I don't have a relationship with my, um, with my older brother. 
Um, and then as far as the father, I found out many years ago, he is not my actual biological father. Not that it mattered because he never darn on made an effort um, from the ages of 18 when I found them all the way up until they came down here like five years ago. So that would have put me at 25. So within that seven year span, you never made an effort to darn on send a birthday card. Because y'all know I am very easy to please. Like I am, I, I am somebody that craves status and power and stuff like every Capricorn, but I'm a sentimental person. It's like a handwritten letter goes a long way. Um, you know, get, instead of giving me money, something generic, give me a doggone thing of Twix, get me a Hershey's and Cookies and Creek. Now, this is more so intimate now. Um, but, you know, friends and stuff can get me chocolates and stuff too. Matter of fact, do I still even got that letter? I think I burnt it. Oh, no, I still got it. So, I will give him credit. I deal with attachment disorders as well. So, I ended up keeping the letter that he wrote me five years ago. So, he goes to explain how... See, but did, see this is the bullshit, though. Talking about how he wants to help me become a better man and all this. Because here's the backstory. They don't know that I'm trans. Hell, the demon that lives with me don't even know that I'm trans. So I'm not even going to hold this against him or whatnot. It's the thought that counts. So I guess that's why I held on to it until now. Please let us be father and son like it should be. I'm sorry I can't teach or learn things as a child. But I can help you become a better man. Show you how to become a very... Okay, R.E. person. I don't know what that posting meant. And hopefully you, me, and brother can write... Okay, he's referring to my brother, his his other son. Uh, can ride in the sunset together. Mother, father, sons. Sorry I miss you growing up, but I will make you ha happier... Okay, so he know how to spell happier correct, but there's a lot of other grammatical areas uh, errors up in here. Child, I was a C average student, so I ain't going to hold you as a young man. Just give me a chance, please. Um, please, five on your... Okay, this, this is where it gets weird again. Just give me a chance, please. Oh, son. Okay. See, see, he wrote it like the like the number five. Okay. You are my baby and will always be that. Love you forever and a day. Love you ever, dad. And then it turns over. All I need is a chance to show you because you are my everything. Please, let's talk about it. Love you, dad. Matter of fact, if I had the ashtray right here, I'd go ahead and burn it on up and just call it a wooded ox. That was five years ago. Held on to it. And now, I can never going to be done with it. I can finally let it go. Um, I appreciate the sentiment, but the fact that he's not my biological father, it really darn on makes it where it's like I don't, I don't care to have anything with you. Now, in the midst of that, I found out who was my biological father. It was a running joke that I looked like this darn on man um, that everybody seems to know who is a former race car driver, retired um from military and darn on um, postal service work or whatnot, uh, has numerous properties, is a documented millionaire, etc. And I'm not the only illegitimate child in the sense uh, because he has over seven plus different churches. So, yeah, turns out my brother from my egg donor side is not my only sibling. Come to find out now, I have now granted. My oldest brother's 
father who I thought was my father for like the first 18 years of my life he's also a rolling stone so I thought I still had multiple siblings that I never met half siblings in excess of a half dozen but turns out no the half dozen siblings is on the other person's side uh, which makes it even worse because it's like you're in the same city as me you are somebody that everybody done told you about me to the point where, and then people recognize me because obviously I guess the resemblance is so, you know, spot on that even total strangers have darn gone ask me about his side of the family over my maternal side. So that goes to show the looks are there. And yet you've made it no attempt to darn gonna reach out to me. And it's like, I've tried to reach out since 2015. I've even tried to reach out uh, recently within the past uh, couple months and still crickets. And everybody else gets the dark on somehow know who this dark on person is but me. And it's like I don't get the chance to even know my siblings or whatnot even behind this dark on bullshit. All because of these dark on two trifling and dark on. The egg donor, that's what I call them. The sperm donor and the egg donor. So, I have that resentment issue. Now, how does this play into my dating life? It pretty much goes to show that there was no actual positive male influence ever in my life. The ones that were in my life um, either got snatched from me or, you know, it was they, they was too far apart in age for me to really darn going getting like hang out but like the only male influence i seen was my uncle may he rest in peace he died last year of colon cancer and i ain't talking about the egg donors brother that that one he can he can rot in hell too uh for all i care we in a far better place uh we're not in the point of darn on spite for this night when he got out of jail and he tried darn on shoot me darn on dead uh we we came a far away from that point um but still i don't really care for his ass love my darn on baby cousins and whatnot so i love all three of them but i can do without him um if he was to drop dead tomorrow wouldn't give a fuck now as far as my grandmother's brother that's who i very much love couldn't even go to his funeral um because of the fact that he passed on my birthday Doing, and y'all know my birthday um, last year, I was battling COVID for a second time. And since we had, you know, my great aunts and stuff that was attending, I didn't want to put nobody at risk that was in a, um, you know, that was very much high risk or whatnot. So I had to darn on stay home for the funeral process. Um, but I did get to work on da 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 Amazon. Barely can talk. I was darn going doing call center work uh, for Amazon at the time. Can barely even darn going converse with the folks on the phone. I'm trying to help people darn going track their packages. Can barely even get the words out and stuff. Thank thankful for the customers who didn't complain and work with me or whatnot. That and they didn't want to deal with no darn going Asian bitch overseas, so they worked with it. But yeah, that was the only male influence. Um, my my egg donor's boyfriend wasn't shit. Um, hell, some of the men that she darn on cheating on him with were darn on better, you know, than he was in the sense of fatherly roles or whatnot. But like I said, they wasn't there too long. I had my cousins that lived with me for a brief period of time. Um, shout out to them. One was a, a boy cousin or whatnot, but once again, they got snatched from me abruptly. Uh... They moved out when I was like 10 years old. I didn't get to see them again until I was grown, till we was 18. And then again, like we, we for whatever reason, like we darn going to have these huge spans of times between us seeing each other. Like from 10 to 18, we didn't see each other no more. And actually, far as the male cousin, I didn't see him from the ages of 10 until like three years ago. So it was like, ooh. A 17 year gap between me seeing him so it's like every male sort of person in my life have been snatched in some sort of capacity 
So I've never had the I've never had the chance to be around any sort of doggone male influence or whatnot. So when it came to dating, I think that played a part in, you know, me not knowing how to approach guys or whatnot. Because I didn't have no, you know, guys or anything to ask about this. And then, you know, we have to also address the elephant in the room. With me being who I am. Obviously, I couldn't. It would have been awkward asking my cousins anyway about that because they're not gay. But still, if I could have got a sense of how men operate or whatnot. Like, see men in the habit. Because y'all know I'm a very analytical person. I'm a very observant person. So if I was able to just see how any sort of male relationship dynamic, I, I guess that would have played a little bit more of a part of me approaching guys in my own way. But not seeing that at all. My grandfather was dead long before I was born. Same thing for my great-great-grandfather. The women lived far longer in my um in on my maternal side than the men do. Y'all know I just lost my great great aunt um, last year. She lived to be 105 years old, and yeah, she died in November, which is the worst month for me um, because I, I, it seems like we lose everybody in November. My great grandmother, we buried her on election day in 2016. I lost my grandmother on the 17th of November. Um, my uncle. My uncle's um, son, he was murdered on around uh, November 30th, December 1st-ish. He got murdered by, uh, no, not December 30th, but no, the end of November, the first day of December. <laughs> Y'all, Lord, I got to get out of this damn house. Darn on something brushed up against the door. I know somebody done came into this house. Another darn on side story I got to tell y'all about. <laughs> I done had stalkers or whatnot. Somebody broke into my house um, a couple months ago and I've been shaking up ever since. So, ooh. Back to where we was at. Like I said, I've never had any sort of male influence in my life to darn on make engagement of how you know the males work or what how you know how men move or whatnot so when it came to dating it's always been darn on hella awkward you combine that with the fact that um even outside of the lack of male representation anybody that i've gotten close to period whether male or woman has been snatched abruptly out of my life um, because my grandmother died at not at 59. Um, she had fluid buildup and she ended up dying of heart failure. And she was the one that raised me most of my life or whatnot. And then it forced me to have to darn on abruptly live with this darn old demon that I really didn't care for. And like I said, my older brother was snatched out of my life from the age of two. Never had a relationship with him. Uh, my biological father, that was darn going speculated, but wasn't confirmed until I was 18. And even then, he, uh, despite the fact that we live in the same city, he's a millionaire. He still doesn't make the darn going attempt to even see me. Not even on about monetary or anything, because all that's going to pass. It's like, would that help? It would. But it's like, I'm... I, I'd rather darn on get to know who my father was as opposed to, you know, anything monetary, you know, materialistic or monetary or whatnot. And then that's what darn on gets me because it's like he showered all his other uh, children. I'm the only one. I do not know why. I don't know if it's because he just cannot stand the egg donor that much. Well, hell. If it's any constellation, the damn feeling's fucking mutual. But I wish I would at least get an answer. Like, I wish I can get a response to an email or something. Maybe he might come across this video. I don't know. But, yeah, from that to, you know, even when I've had therapists in the past, um, they would get snatched abruptly because, obviously, the job that they worked at, <laughs> the, the Medicaid wasn't darn going, you know, enough to pay for 
for the therapist or whatnot. Say I, I went through like six therapists within one year. And they all left the job, period. It's not like they left me and darn gonna didn't want to see me. They left the whole company or whatnot. Because once again, I was at the mercy of Medicaid at the time. I was, you know, I grew up broke, honey. I'm still broke, but you know, I can actually afford it. You know, if I can't, you know, I can get an actual therapist like I do now as opposed to going through insurance. I mean, granted, my insurance still pays a little part of whatnot so when they want to. That's another story. I'm going through some issues with United Healthcare, but as far as like therapists, cousins, like I've never had nobody really stable in my darn on life. Hell, my egg donor wasn't stable in my darn on life. The only persons that were stable was my darn on grandmother who died when I was 16. My great grandmother was there physically, but she wasn't always there mentally because she started suffering from Alzheimer's from when I was nine years old. And she, like I said, died in 2017. So that put me at, let me see, 24. So I seen the very beginning stages of Alzheimer's with her all the way to the final days. So she wasn't there really for me only because of the fact that, you know, she was dealing with Alzheimer's. So like I said, it plays a part in regards to me darn going. Also, my school background, I was put into isolated darn going um, classes from the second grade all the way up into the ninth grade. All because I had darn on temper tangents when I was in second grade. So they decided to put me in special needs simply because I had anger issues. Not that I had any sort of mental challenges. Not that I'm on the artistic spectrum or anything, or anything of the sort. So you put me in a classroom where it's isolated for so many years. And then you release me out into the world in 10th grade. And then you expect me to darn on naturally have social skills. That took the little bit of social skills that I had out the darn on window. So it made darn on getting friends awkward. I still managed to get friends nonetheless. Uh, some that I'm still in contact with to this very day. But each one of them can tell you that I've never approached them. I, beca I became so isolated to the point where every friendship that I have have been from people reaching out to me as opposed to me reaching out to them. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There is literally not one friend that I have where I actually approach them first. Every single friend that I've had in my entire life from 10, from the ages of 10 onward. Because before 10, I used to be quite sociable. I used to be the popular kid on the block. Um, but then I think about it. They gravitated towards me. I never reached out to them. So... Yeah, I've always been the type where people gravitate towards me. I don't actually go and seek out um, anybody. Um, there's only been one exception, and that's been within the past two, two to three years or so. Um, one person where I really value their friendship, even though it's a virtual friendship or whatnot. Um, I value it nonetheless. Uh... I cannot imagine not, you know, this person not being in my life in some capacity. Uh, I don't want to make this awkward as hell. But, yeah, outside of that person, that's the only person that I've actually gone out my way to seek a darn on friendship for. And even that was darn on short-lived as far as trying to make it an in-person friendship someday because... Let's just say D. Wan fucked shit up. This is another situation where it was my fault, honey. Where I had somebody that was a hella cool friend in my head. And D. Wan darn gone just had to make things darn gone difficult. And that drove the person away um i think me and the person is still cool now of sorts but it just ain't been quite the same or whatnot and it's very difficult to darn on explain because like i said i'm not trying to disclose who the person is or anything but 
yeah, I've even managed to fuck up the ball on that. Um, as far as, like, dating is concerned, it's like, there was one guy that could have been potential that I did not darg on, and this was, I was fresh out of beauty school. It was around 2000, it was 2016, just got my license in the mail. I was doing the services. I done quickly built up a name for myself. I was seeing the army men left and right. The army men was referring their wives and stuff to me. I was getting, I was doing the facials and sh everything. I was darn on getting the money, darn on running, rolling in like clockwork, right? And as I'm darn going, uh, you know, filling up my books, one person darn on books down for a Brazilian. Now y'all know D1. I see all sorts of body types on my table. I am not darn on mesmerized by a big dick nor abs at all like that. Uh, but it was something when he came through that just caught my attention because I feel energy. I'm very much an empath person. And <laughs> in addition to the banging body, honey, I, when I tell you them abs was sculpted, the, the, the skin was just glossy. <laughs> And then he had a, I mean, he just had natural sex appeal to him. It was an instant attraction at first sight. And, but we did not do nothing for months. Um, I kept it professional. Because unbeknownst to me, I didn't even think he was interested. Uh, come to find out, he was very much in interested. He finally darn on made the first movie. Because that's another thing I, I deal with. I struggle with darn going making men known <laughs> I, I mean how, how can i say i struggle with making men know my darn on feelings that is one thing i'm working on is being more direct and upfront um from the get-go and not just you know leaving it up to pheromones and innuendos and whatnot because there's a it, it, leaving it up to innuendos and you know, subliminal messages. You know, stuff can get darn on misinterpreted all the time with that. So, so, that's what happened with that at first. Where it was like, damn. I really want the darn on to tell him I'm interested. And then he was the one that finally made the first move. And then from there, it was darn on. It was good. But for whatever reason, we never took it to like actual relationships. That Because... Just when I thought about taking it to the next level, he had the darn on move. He, I mean, he didn't move, but he was gone temporarily um, because of education or whatnot. And I don't ever want to be the person to stifle somebody um, in their career endeavors or whatnot. So I had to say goodbye. We got reintroduced again during the pan, um, the panty panty, honey. Because I think YouTube still strikes it down if we say the full thing. So y'all know what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, we we darn gone lost connection afterwards. Travel and whatnot. And this is when I had my darn gone. No, this was a couple months before I had my car. I got my car in August. I saw him in May. That's the last time I saw him. That's the one that, that was one of the main ones that got away. And I was like, damn. Because it's hard, like, I've been active in my sex life for 12 years. I have been with a little bit over, I'm getting real personal with y'all. Um, I have been with a little bit over a dozen men. Um, I've only been with a handful, you know, as far as bottom and four. I've been with so few men in that way, I have to literally count. One... One, two, three, four. Yep, I've been with only five as far as the back door. And some of them are not memorable. <laughs> but, uh, he was darn going <laughs> quite. He le let's just say he left the quite the lasting impression of whatnot. <laughs> Even though he was more so the bottom in our darn on situation or whatnot. And it used to irritate the hell out of me. Because I was like, he's so damn fine. The darn on dick size is perfect and whatnot. It's like, and then he was athletic enough where he could do all the things of things that I need him to do. But he was the darn on pillow princess. That was another thing that frustrated me in the bedroom. Was the incompatibility in the sexual department. And it's like, 
that's another conversation within itself. Like, how do you talk with somebody in regards to how to satisfy you in the bedroom? That needs to be a video within itself. Like, but before we even get to that point, it's like you need to darn gonna make sure all the other stuff line up first as far as values, morals, you know, what side of the bed they like to sleep on, you know, food interests, politics, uh, because if you want to be living with somebody or you want to get into a relationship, I think you should, you know, go on a couple of dates and get to really ask those hard-hitting questions. Like, are you a family-oriented person? Are you somebody that you want me to, you want to bring me to the parents? I don't have no attachment to my darn on, you know, egg donor, sperm donor. So, I don't know how this works because I've never seen a successful relationship at all like like I said my older brother got baby mamas my egg donor was never married my grandmother was never married um grandfather died when I was darn going um before I was even born then we got my great grandfather that died hell when my darn going egg donor was like what two or three years old so never got to meet him either so I've never seen like any sort of relationship or whatnot, but I would imagine that the keys to getting to that stage of marriage or whatnot that, you know, if a person is family oriented, it's like, what are the requirements the dar going to meet with the mother? And it's like, I have a fear, like, would I even be, you know, presentable as far, because I don't know what to say or whatnot. Like, I don't know if I will ever get to the point of calling somebody mother or anything like that. I, but at the same time, I don't want to feel like I'm disrespecting my partner's, you know, parents by not saying that. I would still be formal. I would say Miss This or Mr. That, but I have that darn on issue I deal with. Or whatnot. All that has played a part with me darn going not really wanting to take it there because I've had plenty of people that still try to pursue me. Some it were good or whatnot. And due to my own insecurities, due to abandonment issues, and being afraid that anytime that I get close to somebody, they are just snatched out of my life. Anytime I try to reach out in any sort of way, it's like the messages are not received or anything like that. So that has darn on really stifled me for many years of my darn on life. And I said, I got I got to break up out of this. Um and you would think with me being 30 that and me knowing this, I would have darn on came to terms with this. But even this year I am still a work and learning progress because I swear we're going to stop talking about this boy. <laughs> I swear we got to stop talking about him. But y'all know I fell in love recently again. Now this shit was dead on arrival. It was completely one-sided. I was darn going foolish or what not to think that it was a slight hint of possibility. But y'all know Capricorn nature, I refuse to give up. I, I said if there's a little slither of chance... There's a will, there's a way. So, I darn going, kept darn going pursuing it. And then to make matters worse is the person was what I would deem to be a friend. And then that darn going just fucked up the darn going friendship. And then it's like now the friendship become darn going strained with me darn going trying to take it beyond darn going friendship. So... I say all that to say, where do Darn on Diva Wine go here as far as trying to Darn go on, you know, deal with these multitude? Because there's two things I got to deal with. I got to deal with not feeling like abandoned anymore. So, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm trying to do my part as far as reaching out to folks more often like even with my neighbor who's become a friend recently i because there's another thing i i look back on my life i'm never one to reach out to people i don't call up folks like i can go months without talking to anybody and that could be a very bad thing especially 
Because you don't know what somebody else is going through. And it's like, how is you a decent friend if you never reach out to people to see how they doing or whatnot? So I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to get out of my character of not just being a complete recluse and just stick it to myself and saying, well, hell, if they don't tell me nothing, I, I don't say. Now, the thing is this, when people come to me, I am, I'm a great consoler. I don't mind darn going sitting and listening and talking for hours, but I always wait until stuff is brought to my attention um, versus, you know, just checking on the well-being of people. So that's one thing I'm changing as far as the friends that I still do have. <laughs> I'm darn going reaching out to my folks, um, my family members that I haven't spoken to in a long time, my friends and whatnot. Um, and just checking and seeing how they're doing. <sighs> Making an issue to get the hell up out of this house. Because I do believe, you know, negative energies and stuff is a stifling uh, um, part of it as well. It's to a point where it ain't that it ain't enough sage in the world to uh, counteract this darn old evil whatnot. Um, building up the courage to travel more. I have been in the same city in my entire life. Like, that's another thing that leads me to darn gone being fearful of, you know, meeting folks or whatnot. It's because even when it came to the other person that I fell for that it could have been something there, I was afraid to travel. I was like, oh, hell no. I've never been out to the West Coast. This person is darn gone temporarily moving 3,000 miles away. Like... <laughs> I ain't never been outside of North Carolina and granted the darn on sets is amazing and everything else but it's like how do I darn going hell we haven't even darn going established no relationship so just to jump up and darn going try to go 3,000 miles away is a little bit too presumptuous so I had no choice but to let him go so, yeah, my fear of darn going long distance travel. Um, even when I had my car, y'all know, I couldn't bring myself to travel no more than like two hours out. Like, my most long, my longest trip in that car was four hours when I had to take my, he was like the seventh ever darn on um, lift person I ever picked up. And I had to take him all the way from Fayetteville to Jacksonville, North Carolina, and back. So, I mean, not back. I had to drive myself all the way back to Darn on Fayetteville. And Lyft only paid me $9 for that, uh, $90 for that four hours excursion. But thankfully, the Darn on other person was generous. Um, as far as the tip, he gave me a $60 tip within the app. And he gave me like another $60. Like, I ended up getting $120 from him or whatnot. Because he just wanted the convenience of not being stranded. Like, he would have had to wait a whole nother day. He would have had to get a hotel stay and all that. Uh, and would have paid close to $200 alone to get on a, uh, the train to get to Jacksonville. And still probably would have had to pay some additional money for the roommates to uh, come to the bus station. So even with him tipping me over $120, he came out far cheaper just giving me $120 and Lyft charging him $100 some dollars. And he getting there in the same day versus having to wait overnight in a city that he was not familiar with, having to go through the ordeal of trying to book a ticket and all that. So I saved them a hell of a lot of time. But that was the longest trip that I've taken was darn going four hours. Prior to that was me traveling uh, to Columbia, South Carolina. But I was not... Uh, I, I actually had somebody that... Um, you know, we tag teamed as far as I drove there and the person, other person drove back. So I didn't have to do all that driving. That was like a three hour darn going trip or whatnot. But yeah, that's the longest that I've ever drove um, in one drive. So in plane, now granted I've been out of the U.S. and all of that, but still. It's been so many years or whatnot. And like I said, it's one thing to be out. Uh, uh, for like maybe a week or so but for months and months on end with somebody it's like California got so many crazy rules the wildlife like I can't see myself darn on being on the west coast with anybody so 
But he came, he since came back to North Carolina and unfortunately stuff just did not work out. And now we still are going dating and exploring all stuff. So I have gotten out of my shell so much so that we are now dating doggone women. <laughs> I still got to get used to that, y'all. So Diva Warren is now exploring the pansexuality side of her life. And the dates have been going good thus far. Um, I've been afraid, though, to go on any more dates afterwards. They've been hitting me up, and I've been making up excuses. And maybe I needed to do this vid video, this, you know, release video. It's a combination of things. I'm venting. I'm releasing. I'm doggone disclosing to y'all. I'm seeking out any help because I still don't know all the answers. Uh, so if y'all got some advice for you, girl, honey, definitely feel free to leave them down in the comment section below because it's definitely appreciated. But yeah, y'all, that is a little bit more about me. That is how, you know, <sighs> yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Y'all done got a, pre a, a, a pretty much a decent background of my upbringing. I feel like I done did this before. I think I did this um, as far so some of this stuff might seem redundant because I think I mentioned most of this um, when I did the video about my biological father being absentee or whatnot. But I didn't dive into like the love aspect and why it's been so difficult with me trying to maintain friendships. Cause I, I mean, not friendships, but that too. I've had issues with some friendships, uh, especially one of the most recent. Um, but as far as like dating, why is it that I've been on YouTube now for, let me see, I've been on YouTube since high school, two 2012 I've been on YouTube for 11 years y'all have never actually seen me in a relationship and this is why <laughs> this is why so we're trying to make the change from that this year so if y'all got any advice on what Diva Wan can do as far as you know everything that I just mentioned uh, definitely feel free to leave it down below uh, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will be back next week. So next week, I'm thinking I'm going to touch on uh, what do I actually seek for women. Because I think y'all already know what I seek for guys. But I do an updated video as well. Like, what are things that actually turns me on as far as, you know, dating. Because I'm not the conventional girl. Like, I don't like getting glammed up. Um, some of the simplest things, I, and granted I've said this sporadically through videos, but I'm going to make a whole dedicated video on how to pretty much court Diva Wan. <laughs> so pretty much, so for all the guys and stuff that inbox me and some of the girls, um, y'all will actually have a whole dedicated video that y'all can see of what is my likes and dislikes. That way y'all know how to avoid dislikes and y'all can darn go on, you know, do everything that turns Diva Wan on or whatnot. So I think that, and like I said, I think that's the key to developing a successful relationship is being upfront, letting people know from the jump what are your triggers, what pleases you, um, you know, yeah, you know, take a time to sit down and do like a diagram chart or whatnot and see you know where your partner's differences are and where y'all meet in the middle at and if there's enough if the good outweighs the bad there is you know the little bit of bad is worth working on or whatnot at least that's how i think all this is darn on speculation and hypothesis um and not even really a hypothesis because i haven't even really managed to prove the concept uh or whatnot from my point of view I hope to prove it someday. But anyways, that is my darn story, y'all. Next week, I'll be back <laughs> with the darn going how to approach Diva Wine videos. Uh, so with that being said, y'all know what to do in the meantime. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all soon. Mwah.